Hello learners, hope you're keeping well. I think that's now my favorite phrase in each of my lessons. Uh, today we're actually going to look at uh, geomorphology and we're going to look at fluvial landforms. Now let's get going. Okay. Now firstly, as in all the lessons, we have to look at what we're going to cover. All right. Uh, we're going to look at all these. We're going to identify, describe the formation of the following fluvial landforms. Okay, so let me get my pen organized. Ah, there we skip a slide. I'll get my pen organized and then we can get going. All right, we're going to look first. We're going to look at meanders. We're going to look under meanders. We're going to look at the undercut. We're going to look at the slip off slope. We're going to look at the Oxbow Lake, the Sand Island, the Braided Stream, the Flood Plain, the Natural Levy, the Waterfall, the Rapid, the Delta. And then we're going to look at how it is utilized by man, okay? Or by humans, I apologize, females. It's by humankind. You know, we old people still say sometimes, and that's uh, the discriminating against the female. So it's human kind. Okay. Let's go on. Let's look at the first one, the waterfall. Okay. It generally happens in the upper course and uh, not that it can't happen lower down, but mostly in the upper course. All right. We can see it's a beautiful sight here. All right. Something all of us love to watch and love to enjoy. The aesthetic appeal is beautiful with regards to a waterfall. Okay, how is it caused? Let's look at this. It's caused, first of all, by a difference in rock resistance. All right? That means harder rock and softer rock. Okay, so the river flows over the harder rock okay it's flowing but as it reaches the softer rock it erodes it faster okay that's obvious it erodes it faster all right harder rock slower so there's our harder rock here learners and all of a sudden it came across softer rock and what did it do to softer rock it eroded it faster okay so the softer rock got eroded faster. Now what happens? It's like a step formation here, Linus. Can you see it? A step formation that is forming. So it forms a step in the river. I call it the step. I like that. All right, because now there's a drop change in, in gradient here. Okay, now the river flows over the step to form a waterfall. There's the river flowing over now. Can you see it? And it's forming a waterfall. A waterfall is with waterfalls. <laughs> okay, right. So over time, now that's your waterfall, but over time, what happens? The overhanging resistant rock breaks off. Can you see the resistant rock is here? The softer rock was getting eroded. All right. Now this overhanging resistant rock is down here and eventually it breaks and falls can you see it lying down here now pieces of this rock obviously there's water coming down so the movement of this rock in the water also results in erosion all right it's knocking against each other it's like abrasion attrition etc with knocking on the sides and things like that all right so it's eroding and as it's eroding, it's making it deeper here. Yeah. Can you see it? Making it deeper. And that is known as your plunge pool. This area here can be very dangerous if it's very deep. It eh? can be misleading. People walk here and suddenly, boom, the inside here. And you can drown. So it's your plunge pool that forms. Okay, learners, that's your waterfall. Let's go to the next one. Around. But it's very turbulent flow. You can look at it here. Turbulent flow. 
All right, you can see the foamy nature down here. All right, in the upper course, generally in the upper course, all right, you find that this happens because there are waterfalls around there, there are rapids, etc. Okay, and now how does it, it flows over uneven riverbed, the bottom of the river, the riverbed. It flows over where it's uneven. Now, how is the unevenness caused? Again, by a difference in the rock resistance. All right, there's a difference in that rock resistance. So therefore, in that the rock now, it will flow over. And as it flows over this difference, it will create a rapid, all right? So the softer rock gets eroded faster, all right? The harder rock causes the obstructions over which the river flows. And these little obstructions, yeah, creates the rapid. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm putting in a softer rock, but the rapid as it flows over that. Okay, let's go on. Right, let's look at the next one. A meander. All right. This is loop-like bends in the river. In the middle, all right, this is what's generally found, but you also find it in the upper, or oh, sorry, lower. Where am I going? Lower. Let me write that down. Lower. So you remember that. And I think my writing is definitely improving in the lower course all right you'll also find it in the lower course all right these meanders okay as it goes through all right and then it develops as a result of increased lateral erosion all right which allows the river to cut the sides of the river channel. Can you see the river moving? All right, it's cutting. It's moving, it's cutting, it's eroding, okay? As it moves through its course, all right? So it also starts to meander, okay? On one side, there's erosion. On the other side, there's deposition, okay? Now, so we know it's a bend on the river, okay? The outer bank, of the river channel okay flows faster resulting in erosion can you see it here the outer bank that's the outer bank as it moves here it's the outer bank so we're having erosion all right and this is known as your undercut erosion undercut slope rather okay so we have the undercut slope on the inner bank, it's not so energetic, all right? There is more deposition resulting in the slip-off slope. Can you see? On the inner bank now, we have more deposition, all right? So this, as it's moving here, it will be flowing here, it will erode, all right? On this side, it will deposit. Now, where is it eroding? Can you see as it's eroding, it's steeper on this bank. And here it is more gentle because of the deposition. Slip off slope, deposition, undercut slope, erosion. Let's look at the matching, the cross down here. All right, cross profiles. Okay, here you'll notice the river is flowing straight. All right. There's no bends. So the profile is more or less evenly based there. Can you see it? Here, it's flowing and it's eroding here. Okay. So we said when it erodes, it's steeper here. This is the undercut slope. Notice your profile. Okay. On this side, it is steeper and here it is more gentle because erosion here, deposition here. All right, now look at this. As it goes, it's going to erode here. Yeah. Okay, so this side will be steeper. Now look at your cross section. It's steeper on 
the side. Can you see? So sometimes you can ask you to match cross profiles, okay, with the uh, river itself and tell me where it's going. If you come back here, it's flowing straight. There's no massive difference in steepness between the boat slopes. So it's important to know all this, learners. That's your meander, generally in your middle course, all right? And also you get it in the lower course. Then we talk about an oxbow lake, all right? Uh, most time, it's, it's, or, or rather, it is found in your lower course. All right, now let's look at what happens here. It's a horseshoe shape, as can be seen in this little picture. My face a little bit away from you. Can you see the horseshoe shape here? Okay, there's your river here. So let's look at how it actually happens. All right, so it forms when the meander bends is cut off from the main river, okay? All right, it'll happen in any form of rejuvenation. The river has been energized, okay? So what happens is when the river has been energized and comes down in flood, it cuts through the neck of the meander, all right? Now let's look at that, all right? Now, let's make sense in this little sketch down here. There's your river meandering, it's flowing. Remember, you've got your undercut, your slip off slope, etc. Now, as this river gets more energy, it flows faster. And as it flows faster, what's going to happen? On the, on the bends that it flows, it's going to erode more. All right, you remember that? All right, it's going to erode more. Can you see it there? And as it's eroding more, this is known as the neck of the meander. As it's eroding more and more and more, you understand? What's happening to the neck? It's getting narrower, okay? Narrower. Can you see it's getting narrow? And eventually what happens? When the river comes in flood, all right, uh, there's it in flood here. Okay, with this narrow bed, which is cut through now, there's deposition that happens here. And as deposition happens, what happens eventually? This part of the meander is separated from the main river. And this horseshoe shaped Oh, I'm decorating this diagram that is separated from the river is known as an oxbow lake in the lower course. Let's look at a floodplain, the next one. Okay. Now, when we look at the floodplain, it's associated with the word flood. Flood. Please remember that, flood, all right? And that's how we get it. So as the river nears the lower course, the valley is wider and the gradient gentle, okay? We know in the lower course, it is gentle gradient. As you can see down here, okay? It's gentle, gentle, okay, gradient, all right? The flat area is on either side of the river channel. Okay, and this is known as your flood plain. All right, during times of flood, the river overflows its banks, depositing alluvium, those rich sediments, all right, onto the Sites, which is your floodplain, hence the name floodplain. So, from this, we can gather that the floodplain has got rich sediment deposits. Okay, rich sediments deposits, which you know already can be used for agriculture, farming, 
Okay, those sort of things, it can be used for already because of the rich sediments. But let's look at our sketches. Can you see the flat terrain here? There's your river meandering down here. All right, and as I said, meanders can happen in the lower course. All right, there's it meandering, and this area is the flat area. And now, there's a river flowing, and when it gets into flood, what happens? Notice the change here. The water starts to flow across this flood plain. All right, that's why we said flood plain. All right, and then deposit sediments, etc. This is beautiful here. There's your river here, Lannis. Can you see it? The river is here. Okay, and on either side, can you see the sediments have been deposited together with the water? We also see even settlements happening here. Lots of it is uh, rural settlements, farmers settling down, etc. All right, so that you can do farming and things like that in that area. All right, so here is where the water starts to flood out of the river and you notice it is a flat terrain okay let's look at another one a levy all right but we are we focusing on a natural levy now what happens here during flooding the coarsest and heaviest materials are deposited alongside the river channel, all right, forming a natural ridge or embankment called the levee. Okay, seems a bit abstract, all right. Now let's look at it. <clears throat> let's look at this little sketch here. Before flooding, everything was fine. Look at the level of the water. It's there, all right. Now, flooding happens. Can you see the flood stage where the water floods? The, look at the level of the water now. It's much, much higher. Okay, can you see that? Now what happens? As it floods like that, sediments or alluvium or whatever you want to call them there, as long as it's geographically correct, starts to accumulate on the sides all right and what happens when the river after flooding the level of the water comes down and look at what has happened here the sediments stay here and of course the coarsest and the heaviest all right if you're digging a hole learners you'll find that as you throw out okay the sand particles things that are heavier will fall alongside the hole all right, and that is why you find it's elevated and the lighter materials will flow down, the dust materials will flow down. So the heavier materials stay on the side, all right, which creates an elevated riverbank. Can you see it there? An elevated riverbank, all right. Now look at this picture, learners. It seems like somebody made it there. Look at this area here along the river. It's elevated. That's your natural levy. It's elevated, all right? So to help, eh, learners, if you're elevating this river comes in flood later, it actually can hold more water back, okay? And maybe reduce the risk of flooding. Not totally take it away, but reduce the risk of flooding, okay? Let's go on. Another feature, a delta, all right? These are massive features, eh? Learners. Some of it can go up to 1,000. I think the Ganges Delta is over 1,600 kilometers wide. All right, they're huge. Okay, so let's look at this. Fluvial landform is a fluvial landform that is caused by deposition of sediment that was carried by a river and the as the flow leaves its mouth and enters slower moving water all right it slows down all right so what happens as it slows down it's going to lose energy all right and if it loses energy its carrying capacity will be less so learners what actually happens here is i promise you that is pure water eh? all right uh, what happens here is that as it deposits 
okay it's going to create little sand islands okay along the now note what i said slower moving water all right you find a lot of your deltas are found near or right at the sea but it doesn't necessarily have to be at the sea okay it occurs when a river enters the ocean which is your sea all right sea i'm going to use that word estuary or lake it can be a lake also it's entry okay it may be a little flatter it loses its energy it deposits so it doesn't necessarily have to be at the sea just remember it most of it happens there all right so what happens the deposit the deposited materials build up vertically so it grows higher and higher and higher all right so there's it here can you see it all right it's higher than the level of the water it's higher than the level of the water so what happens now the river has to create channels through the deposited material look at this lens what the river is doing it's creating little channels can you see it there's your channels going through the sea oh we don't want to end the show all right let's go here can you see more channels coming through all right it's creating channels okay now these channels when they go into the sea all right they never join again it's part of the sea so there's a name for this all right and this is known as distributaries branches of a river that does not return to the mainstream after leaving it okay there's it it's gone in to the sea that's a distributary all right we also know there are various types birds foot and hype. there's so many things all right but you need to know all right that generally it is fan shaped can you see it? sort of fan shaped coming out here that's your general thing all right so uh generally fan shaped as you can see here there's the delta there's your sand uh, deposit or sediment deposited down here sand banks all right there's your river creating your distributaries there's the ocean here yeah? it can be a lake just remember that lens all right, there's your little ones going in and that's it, it's gone. Okay, do you understand that letters? That is your delta, obviously in the lower course. Okay, let's go on. The next one we look at is your braided streams. Also in the lower course, all right? What happens here? It occurs where the river load is heavy and some sediments are deposited. Some processes are similar to the delta, eh, Linus? Similar to the delta. Okay, so it's deposited, creating sand islands. Sometimes the word sandbars will be used. Okay, so let's look at this. Can you see that's your sandbar? That's your sandbar? That's your sandbar? There's it here. Okay. Right, and this is between the river channels. Can you see the river channels here? It's in between the river channels. There's all your channels here, and it's in between that, and then it flows down, all right? Eventually, when it completes the flow past the sand bars, what happens? It joins again. So in this case, the river joins again. So it's not a distributor because eventually, if you look up here, it may have been one river. Can you see it flowing here? And what happens? It flows between and eventually it joins again down here. All right. That is your braided stream. All right. They recombine in the end. Now, similar. I know many of you know the word braids and that's what it looks like. Look at this picture here, Lance. Can you see it? Maybe this will be the new fashion that you'll be using in your hair. These braids that are spread out. 
okay especially when you reach my age and you start to lose your hair i don't think i mean losing my hair at the moment but uh, uh, you'll find that these are similar to the braids in your hair a braided stream so i want to say that uh, fashion has got it from geography that's where the word braid has come from but i don't really know where it actually came from all right which one was first uh, i think i know but i'm not going to tell you okay right uh, uh there i go messing my diagram again let's look at the utilization of landforms by humans now i'm going to give you a few examples remember when you're writing your exam or you're writing an assessment once again because there's so many examples look at the resource now i know you must be getting tired of me saying this please look at the resource to see what's found there and make your answer specific to that i'll be showing you a past paper just now and you'll see that some things you'll have to work out you'll have to work out yourself in order to get the answers but you'll have to look at resources etc so let's look at some hydroelectricity from the waterfalls that's how man uses it especially those waterfalls not not me in south africa I have it that way but where waterfalls have continuous flow of water you understand you can put your turbines there you can generate electricity fantastic all right that can be brought in from there okay then water supply from things like oxbow lakes you've seen that horseshoe shape it's a lake itself it may look very narrow from there but these lakes can be wide it can be a kilometer more wide you understand all right so there's a lot of water it can be used for various things okay the water supply for agriculture we can even use it for recreation uh, learners all right or for various other things specific maybe farming forestry you understand whatever it can be used for that water sample applies available domestic use etc then agriculture and i'm going to make it specific to towards farming also i didn't include the word here but farming also which you can use the flat plains and the deltas it's flat area the flat plain has flat land it is rich in sediments and by being rich in sediments you understand it's ideal for farming of course we'll take in various viewpoints where they'll farm where the things will be etc deltas also deltas have a lot of economic activity there's 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 farming going on there you understand on all those uh, sediment deposits which are quite big when you saw the picture i showed you all right lots of activities can happen there okay that you could look at all right so flood plains deltas all used for farming also and i put the word farming here all right i'm gonna do some practice with my highlighter and not my writing okay farming all right so we got farming happening and I'm write the word farm a little practice while I do my lesson okay uh, I'm just gonna say farm Ming oh I'm just fooling around a bit now uh, yes give me a round of applause learners I think that wasn't bad okay so recreation is the next one all right where we can have recreational activities if you go to the waterfall people go and relax there they have picnics and they admire the waterfall uh, for whatever reason i know you have other reasons but whatever reason it's such a beautiful site this aesthetic appeal you understand that's happening in that area okay you can play in the plunge pool of course watch out where you go all right rapids is also recreation all right uh canoeing and whatever that you can go white water rafting recreation of course the others can also be used okay i'm just giving you some examples all right settlements also can happen 
on flat plains, it's flat land. You understand? Uh, you can build down there. Of course, you'll be cautious where you build. Right? If it's flooding in a certain area, you'll avoid it because of the dangers of flooding. Right? It's easier to build transport networks, whether it's a delta, whether it's a flat plain. You understand? Flat areas, you don't pay so much money. Can you see the examples that we could use? There's so many of them okay that could be used here all right uh, economic i'm putting that here in the sense that i know there's economic in other cases here like farming and whatever tourism huge you understand waterfalls rapids especially waterfalls etc people visit waterfalls whether it's domestic tourists or Tourists from overseas, international, they come in there. As soon as they see there's a water, they want to go and see it. All right, that is works. And of course, around this waterfall, hotels, restaurants, all that will start developing. So it's excellent. It makes it's a lot of economic development, bringing in a lot of capital. All right, and of course, employment, etc. I'm, I'm going a little more into this because sometimes you get questions. They don't just ask you significance they ask you the impact of on the economy and various things so learners you must always be prepared not just to look at this with blinkers and say this is the uh, importance of how it's used by humans all right you must then look beyond that right? because that's how your questions can be answered all right or asked rather so very very important all right as normal let's then look at the past paper on this all right now this paper gave us a picture of a delta all right i chose this because there are some questions that even if you look at textbooks you look at content material it went beyond that all right and some ah, but it's unfair etc no 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 it takes you beyond that way you have to apply yourself and that's the reason i chose this one so obviously once again what does the examiner do it gives you a heading which says data all right which tells you what the photograph is about all right we can see the fan shape here, all right, already. We can see, and the examiner has given us a little hint here in terms of this being our sand deposits, all this area here. We can see it's entering the ocean. And then the examiner says, A, A, all right. And wonder what is it? It's pointing to these little channels which are entering the sea. Can you see? And obviously, you know now, that is from our lesson, that that is distributaries because they're entering the sea and they don't join again. We can look, there seems to be some activity here, Lannis, that's happening in this area. I'm not very clear. Some places are cleared. Some things are happening here. We're not sure. Maybe it's farming seems like trees we don't know forestry whatever it seems that things are happening it just could be natural also but it's not clarity but we could use we could make assumptions on those things remember learners if the resource is not very clear there the examiners expect you to to give answers that could be relate that are related to that and are geographically correct so let's get going with the question paper first question what is a delta right it's one mark learners one mark please look at your mark allocations all right very very important in geography because what we found in this question learners were explaining the formation of it they were going through in detail for about five or six lines but what did the, uh, the question want. He just wanted to tell you what is a data. So action words are very, very important. 
Just tell us what is it. Doesn't talk about the formation. So one mark. All right. Remember, definitions have to be uh, full also. Or it's one mark. That's the only cases. Now look at it. It's a fan-shaped fluvial landfall that is formed by deposited material when the river enters the sea. Okay, right. Uh, you gave something, all right, in terms of it doesn't tell you now the energy of the river goes or whatever and it deposits. It doesn't tell you about the distributaries. That all deals with a full explanation. This is maybe it's quite uh, it's long for one mark, but that's how you expect it to answer. What is it? Three things. Fan-shaped fluvial landform, right? Deposited material, which enters in the sea. Of course, you may say, if you did not write fan-shaped, okay, you'd still get the mark. It's a fluvial landform. Uh, it's formed by deposited material when it enters the sea. That's still fine. But I'd like you to write uh, fan-shaped, Lannis, because you don't want to create doubt. Is it correct? Is it not? You must write it so that that marker most probably just close his eyes and say, whoa, what a beautiful script. Do you understand? All right, what a beautiful script. Okay, so let's go on. Give two pieces of information evident, all right, or evident from the photograph that support the statement that this is a data. Again, I'm emphasizing this, learners. Make sure that it's given from the source. Okay, you've studied deltas. You know what, apologies, uh, learners. Uh, you know exactly how it forms, what are features found with it, so you can check clearly. Now, let's go back here. All right. Let's look at what we saw in this. Number one, we saw the sand deposits. Okay, right. Uh, we saw the channels cutting through and then going into the sea, distributaries. All right, it's going into the ocean. So we know that's it. Distributaries will tell you that it's not going to co continue again. So this is information that is evident on the picture and that's what you need to give you can't give information that is not there because the question did not say that general information evident on the sketch photograph picture whatever all right right sand deposits can be seen that's evident there the fan shape which i forgot about yes it's there as we showed you, and the distributaries, all right? And this is not the river split into smaller streams near the mouth, but also remember I gave you the full definition, examiners being nice here, all right? Okay, it splits near the mouth, but that's all right too, because just the reason didn't ask you for the explanation of distributaries. It just says it splits, all right? You can also say it splits and doesn't meet again, goes into the sea. All right, that's it. Or you just write the word distributaries and you find. Okay. Name feature labeled A. Already giving you a little hint from there. And if you looked at the source again, there we are. We worked it out beforehand that that is a dis tributary when we looked at it already so we got our answer all right let's go to that it's a distributaries all right okay all those little ones in a let's look at the next question briefly describe the formation of feature a you know already all right the river splits up into smaller rivulets or smaller rivers. I don't even have a problem. And it moves to a gentle gradient. Okay. As it moves into a gentle gradient, rather. So it splits up. And in 
it moves around sand deposits okay that blocks its path so there are sand deposits and the river moves around it creating those little rivulets or little channels i don't have a problem with the word channels i, I mentioned yet it cuts through okay that explains your answer to the tributary the this tributaries you don't have to mention does it meet again etc you don't have to mention that as long as you've explained it all right let's go and i just maybe before i go can you see they wanted a full explanation because it's one times two okay learners let's go forward what is some coastline or why are some coastlines not suitable for development of deltas this question makes you think learners why now in order to answer a question like this because it's a bit higher order you need to look at what makes a delta possible the formation of a delta possible we spoke about flat terrain all right and there has to be deposition of sediments can you see i'm thinking now there has to be deposition of sediments uh, therefore, these rivulets, canals can be created that move between them. If there's no deposition, uh, what's, what's going to happen? You won't get something like this happening. So it has to be flat. So one of the things we look at, if it's not flat, am I right? You're going to get that as not forming. Okay. Because the water will still move at a pace. You won't get sand islands forming. All right. What else can cause it that can wash away these sand islands? All right. Uh, big tidal waves, if they happen more regularly. All right. Strong ocean currents. Okay. These things can wash away the sand islands. And the sand islands is washed away. You're never going to get the data. You're never going to get these distributaries. See, I'm thinking out. And this is a sort of thinking that we want you to get yourself involved in, in geography. Because geography, again, is never difficult. It's about taking your information, analyzing it, and then going on and answering your higher order questions. So let's look at this. Learn us. It's one times two. So obviously, it's a full explanation. The seabed next to the coastline is too steep or deep. So what's going to happen? There'll be more energy, and the deposits will be washed away can you see how we're thinking now it's washed away all right let's look at something else some coastlines have big tidal range that means they have more tides occurring over a period of time which does not allow the material to accumulate all right big tides so it washes away the material all the time all right uh, some coastlines have strong ocean currents which do not allow material to accumulate. It easily removes the material. Okay, some of it we give, or well, the examiners give all the options. All right, but I said, but how would I know all this? Generally, questions we think out of this thing will be two times two, four, you understand. So in this case, even if you got the first one correct, it'll be there okay of course other thinking out of the book questions can be eight marks but you have a better insight there'll be a little more offered to you if you have to give four different facts for eight marks so do not get too scared about this but you could still work it out even if it was for six marks okay let's go on last one write a paragraph approximately six eight lines all right, I'm saying six all of a sudden. Eight lines, approximately, learners. I know I've said this a hundred times and I'll say it again. All right. Approximately gives you a guideline. When you write too smaller, not too small, that when it's marked, it cannot be seen. It may come less as long as you answered four points fully. Okay. Or you write bigger, that it can be seen by remote sensing okay then you may take a more lines okay so it's approximate please do not not now focus and try to cram your work into eight lines if you write big so 
approximately eight lines explain why deltas are ideal for farming. There's some emphasis here. Eh? It's not just explain, learners. It's not just explain. It is explain why. Okay? Explain why. That's the point. All right? Deltas are ideal for farming. So, two things explain why and the word deltas is ideal and there's a specific thing about farming. Okay? So, specifics, we have to focus on that. All right. So, let's look at this. Regular deposition of silt makes soil fertile, useful for farming. Have we answered it? Explain why there's deposits, silt, fertile. Because it's fertile, it's useful for farming. And we emphasize on the farming. Can you see what we need? Explain why and the factor of farming. Okay. There's excess to water, which is suitable for farming. I would have I would say when you're writing your responses, you must give a little more. All right. And this is a Marcus memo. Excess to water, suitable for farming for irrigation. Can you see? You make it full, learners. You may get this correct. All right. But I'd like you to write irrigation. Can you see it? A little longer so that you know you've got all your points in to explain why, etc. All right. Water is available for fishing or fish farming, more fish farming, you understand, aquaculture, etc., that you can get, breed your fish in the area, and water is needed there, that explains itself. Deltas extend the coastline, all right, and make more land available for farming. True, all right, because as Wherever goes, there are sand deposits and maybe sand deposits going into the borders of the ocean. So what is it doing? It's making more land available, okay, for people to farm. Okay, can you see it? Suitable for crop rice farming because crops rice needs a lot of water to grow. So if that area is full of water, like parts of the Ganges Delta, etc., then you can plant your rice and you plant rice in paddies which have water and it grows well okay so can you see it's thinking out of the box here all right it's looking at what the delta has and once you know what the delta has the usage of this becomes easier in terms of looking at questions like this let's look at this fairly flat it's suitable for machinery which is true, you can use machinery on that. And don't get misled by the dye, by the pictures. You must know these pictures are taken from above. And I told you, uh, a delta can be more than a thousand kilometers wide. So these sand deposits are huge. Okay, right. Then we talk about flat land, ideal to construct transport routes for distributing products. So transportation of goods all right that can be done easily in the area all right again it says distributing of produce things that have been produced in this area if you want to make sure that you uh, have the correct answer produced by farming you understand so each time you add all right the word farming to make 100 percent sure hey I'm not going to lose any marks here. That examiner is going to be, or that marker is going to be very proud of me. They want to meet me one day and shake my hand. You understand? Because my answers are so good. Okay. Even here, can you see you could put it, the land is fairly flat, suitable for machinery used in farming. All right. Can you see it? Example harvester, but you don't have to go into so much detail, but you make sure your answers are there. All right, it takes a few seconds more to put in another answer. Of course, in cases like this, it's four times two. All right, eight marks, which tells you 
four points, fully explained for eight marks. Once again, I'm emphasizing, watch out learners. Explain why Delta farming idea. It's not just explain, explain why, okay? So what have we picked up in this? All right, we picked up in this is that we need to be careful about the action words. Very careful. All right, so that we know exactly what the question wants. If it's analyzed, it's described, it's various issues that you give the proper answer. You know, in many cases, learners, we do find that learners come out and say, we smashed that paper and the answers but when they come back the answers were vague and vague answers get no marks all right they get no marks unfortunately in geography it's either zero or two okay or zero or one in terms of definitions also so make sure your answer is is proper to the question Okay, I am emphasizing a lot on this because this is one of the major areas that markers experience and feel so sad for people. But these are the rules and regulations that if it's vague, it doesn't answer the question. Even if it's, some people say in inverted commas, partly right. Partly right. No, I'm sorry. It's not the issue on hand. Partly right is definitely not. So we need to be careful on that. Okay, I hope I, I went a little longer because I want to emphasize this again, answering of questions. Uh, we now covered the fluvial processes and remember again, learners, application of it. Don't just learn out things. Learning out things get you partly on the path, but a very short distance. If you want to go to the full path, it's about applying it and doing past papers. I do wish you well. All right. And until our next lesson, stay safe and all the best.